dedicated to the files on secondary storage because many files are stored on the same device and the space has to be allocated such that it is utilized effectively and the files can be accessed quickly. So in my earlier videos, we have discussed the contiguous allocation method and the linked allocation method. In this video, we are going to take a look at the indexed allocation method. So in the contiguous allocation, we saw that there were problems of external fragmentation and of size declaration. You can watch my video on contiguous allocation for details. And we also saw that linked allocation solved these above problems but with the use of a FAT or the file allocation table. So in absence of a file allocation table, this linked allocation cannot support efficient direct access. It can only support sequential access because the pointers to the blocks are scattered with blocks all over the disk and must be retrieved in order block by block in sequential manner. So with linked allocation came a problem of this random access. Indexed allocation solves this problem as well. Here all the pointers are brought together into one location which is known as the index block. So let's say a file is allocated many disk blocks. So all the pointers to those blocks where the data is available, all the pointers are put in one block which is referred to as the index block. So each by file has its own index block of pointers to its data blocks. So the ith entry of the index block will point to the ith block of the file and the directory will contain the address of the index block. So as you can see over here, there is a file Mia and its index block is 11, which is pointing to this block over here, block number 11. This is the index block. These blocks, the other blocks are the blocks where the data is stored. So this index block is having pointers to all these data blocks. So what is actually stored in this block 11? The pointers to the data block. So you are having a pointer to block 10, which is this data block. Then the second block of the file is at disk block 25. Then the third block of the file is at address 2. So this is disk block 2. So if we want to access any particular file of the block, then we go to the index block first, which is block 11. So we go to this index block and then index into this block to find out where is the ith block of that particular file. So the directory is just containing the address, address of the index block. And whenever we want to find and read the ith block, we use the pointer in the ith index block entry. When the file is created, all the pointers in the block are set to null. So when the file is being created, so suppose a new file is being created foo and an index block has been allocated to it, let's say 19. So this block 19, all the entries over here will be null because right now there are no data blocks which have been assigned to this file. When the ith block is first written, then the block is obtained from free space manager and its address is put in that ith block entry. So when the file was created, foo, 19 is its index block. So this is block 19 and right now it is having all values as null. Now when the file is being written into, that means now data is being obtained. So out of the available free blocks, one block will be assigned for data. So let's say 23 has been assigned to be the first data block of foo. So this 19 block 19, the first entry over here will be 23, which will show that the first data block is at address of disk block 23. So indexed allocation, it supports direct access because now we simply have to 
index into the index block and then find the address of that particular block that we are looking for. So this kind of allocation it supports direct access and it does not suffer from external fragmentation because disk blocks for the data can be taken from all over the disk wherever they are available. So any free block can satisfy a request for more space for the file. However, it suffers from wasted space because the pointer overhead of the index block is greater than the pointer overhead of linked allocation. So here let's assume that they, we have a file which is having only one or two blocks that means it requires only one or two blocks it is a small file. If we had linked allocation then the space loss would be of only one pointer per block. But with indexed allocation we need an entire index block even if only one or two pointers will be present that means they will be non-null and all the other pointers will be null. So for small files we can see that there is a lot of pointer overhead of the index block which is not there in linked allocation. How large should be the index block? We know that every file must have an index block. So that means that if every file has to have an index block and we don't want to waste a lot of space that means the index block should be small. But if the index block is small or it is too small then it will not be able to hold enough pointers for a large file because a large file would be having many data blocks. So it would need many pointers to all those data blocks. So if the index block is small it will not be able to hold enough point pointers. So what are the mechanisms of dealing with this issue? So one approach or one solution is the linked scheme that means an index block which is normally one storage block. But if we want to allow for large files they can link together several index blocks. So for example an index block might contain a small header giving the name of the file and a set of the first hundred disk block addresses and the next address which is the last word in an index file will be null for a small file or is a pointer to another index box block for a large file. Let's take this example. So we have this file Mia which has this index block which is block 11 and this block 11 is having these pointers to the data blocks. So all these blocks block number 10, 25, 2 all of these are data blocks and the last entry over here is now a pointer to another index block. So this last entry is now pointing to another index block which is now holding the next set of data blocks and now after that if no other data blocks are required and no more pointers are required then the last entry will be null. For a small file even this block will be not required and the entry over here the last entry will be null. So in this way we can see that a small file will need only one index block and if it is a large file and so there are many pointers for many data blocks then the last entry of each block can point to the next index block. So if suppose there was still a larger file then there would be another index block let's say block 5 is an index block or block uh, 7 or then the entry would be here 7 and then this block would now be containing the next set of pointers. So this is one solution which can handle the problem of a large index block. Another solution to this problem of requirement of a large index block is a using a multi-level index. This uses a first level index block. This first level index block points to a set of second level index block which will then point to the file blocks or the data blocks. So here we can see that this is that file Mia 
its first level index block is 11 this is that first level index block this block 11 is holding pointers to the second level index block so it is holding pointers to 5 22 and 20 let's say so these blocks 5 22 and 20 are actually index block so all these are index blocks pointers to index block when we go to block 5 now we have the entry for the pointers to the data block like block 5 is 5 is having entry to 2 10 and 16 so now these are the data blocks pointers to the data blocks again the next index block so this was the first level index block this is second level index block 1 second level index block 2 which is block 22 second level index block 3 which is block 20 and all of these blocks are now having pointers to the data blocks so this is the multi-level index here if we want to access a block then the OS will first use the first level index and to find the second level index block and then it will use the second level index block to find the desired data block and this can go on to second level index block to third level index block and so on depending upon the sizes of the files so whatever is the maximum file size that will depend upon how many levels of index blocks are required so if there are 4096 byte blocks and they can store 1024 pointers we are assuming that each pointer requires 4 bytes so each 4096 byte block can store 1024 pointers so two levels of indexes will allow these many data blocks for, and a file size of up to 4 gigabytes the third solution is to use a combined scheme which is used in unix based file system so here the first let's say 15 pointers of the index block are kept in the files inode the files inode is the file control block kind of the file control block so here the first 12 of these pointers will point to the direct block that means they are pointers to directly to the blocks that are containing the data so if we have a small file that means if there is a small file which is less than 12 blocks then it will not need a separate block because these 12 pointers first 12 pointers will point directly to the data blocks so if the block size is 4 kilobyte and we, we can access 12 blocks that means 48 kilobytes of data can be accessed directly so if we take a look at this if this is the inode of the file then the first 12 pointers they are pointing directly to the data block so these are the addresses directly of the data blocks the next three pointers point to indirect blocks so here these next three pointers they are pointers to, to the indirect blocks we have the single indirect block double indirect block and the triple indirect block so the single indirect block it is a pointer to an index block which contains the addresses of blocks that contain data so this is the single indirect block so this is pointing to a index block so this is an address which is pointing to this index block over here so this is the second level index block now and here we are these are pointing to the data blocks then we have this second pointer which is pointing to a double indirect block here what happens this is pointing to an index block which is now having pointers to multiple second level now index block again and each of these is now pointing to data blocks and the last pointer is a pointer to a triple indirect block because there are triple indirect index blocks blocks over here and then the final level over here will be having the addresses of the data block so the last pointer contains the addresses of a triple indirect block so these are the schemes which can be used to effectively store the addresses or the 
pointers to the data blocks. So at different levels how these index blocks can be created that has been explained in this video.